Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the BMW 5th Wheel Rail Kit on a 2016 GMC Sierra 1500. This kit's going to allow you to have industry standard rails in your bed, that way you can drop in your 5th wheel head and hit the road. Now, installation's pretty easy overall because these are universal, the brackets underneath the truck are actually custom fit so there's no real drilling except for the holes to pass the carriage bolts down. The rest of it uses just uh, normal holes and hardware in the frame already and then we just kind of bolt it all together. So overall it's a pretty quick and easy way to get a fifth wheel towing of a camper or a trailer with your Sierra. Now because it's standard size rails it's going to allow you to drop in a number of different fifth wheels so if you plan on changing it out later on or you already have one no worries it's going to work with that fifth wheel. Overall, installation's not too terribly bad. It is custom fit brackets. There's a few spots that are gonna be pretty tight. And when you're doing your drilling, you do need to take caution because there is the potential for damage of wiring. But as long as you take your time and follow along with the instructions, we'll get yours installed. So let's take a look at that. To begin our installation, we're gonna go ahead and get our spare tire lowered down and out of the way. It's gonna just kind of open it up a little bit as far as real estate and working on the vehicle. Now, another little pro tip, if your vehicle, if you drive down dusty or dirty roads, this whole installation is gonna be underneath the truck. So you might run, run it through a power washer or a car wash, something along those lines, kind of knock some of that down. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier for you not only to see, but also not get stuff in your eyes while working on it. So get your tire lowered down and out of the way. Now our brackets that's going to mount up to the frame, we're going to need to create a little bit of space here and we have a bracket that holds these brake lines in and it's bolted in with two 13 millimeter screws that go from the top on the frame. We're going to want to take those out and that way we can mount up our bracket here. It's going to extend it out a little bit giving us that clearance. So just kind of go up here, I have a ratcheting 13 millimeter wrench and you'll find the two bolts are kind of offset from one another. Uh, just go ahead and get those removed. Once we get that other 13 out, our bracket should be loose. Now sometimes uh, there is a little bit of wire loom with the plastic clip that kind of snaps in the frame. If you need to pry that out of the way, you can use a flathead. It'll just give you a little bit more space. But our bracket, we can kind of bring this out. Um, now, if there's zip ties or anything that are attaching it, you can see the wire loom is pretty tight here. Our bracket's gonna push this out. And when we mount it up, we're gonna want this notch where those factory 13s were that we just removed. And then our bracket's gonna bolt here using our new hardware. So I'm gonna cut back some of our zip ties that are holding this in place, and then we can get this mounted up. So our bracket I tightened down up top with those 13s, and then I dropped in our bolt and then our crush washer as well as our uh, our 13 millimeter nut here. I got that kind of tight, just kind of in place. Now I did pop off some of the clips that attaches the hard lines as well as some of this wire loom. And that allowed me to kind of pull this back. Now you gotta be careful because these are, you know, hard lines, you don't want to damage them. But I was able to kind of pull this back enough to get that other one dropped through. And then I just went back with the 13 millimeter. And you may need to put a wrench up top and a socket on the bottom, but go ahead and tighten that down. Now we're ready to get the rear rail. Uh, laid out and this is going to be the basis for measuring for our front so take your time here make sure you measure it twice and you're just going to want to take your time here make sure it's centered up now depending on your bed length that's where you're going to be measuring from the rear right here on the edge not the tailgate and that's going to go to the rail or the front part of this rail here. Now, if you have a longer bed, it's gonna be different. Just refer to your instruction manual to get the proper uh, distance. So I have a chalk marker. This is really nice because you can make marks and if it's not exactly where you want it, you can wipe that off. But if you have a paint marker or something to, uh, you can put a divot in there or something, a punch will work. You can do that. But main thing is measure both sides. You're also gonna to wanna to measure side to side to make sure it's centered up. So I'll go ahead, get my marks placed. I'll get this aligned on our distance here, make sure it's all squared up. And then I'm gonna just kind of eyeball it here because I know uh, roughly between the corrugations where it should sit. And then I'll just get a quick measurement here to the side. 
Now something else you're gonna to wanna to take in consideration is if you have a spray and bed liner, that is gonna add a little bit, obviously, to the length. So take that into account. A lot of times, about an eighth of an inch, you're gonna to wanna to, uh, subtract from that number just to make sure that you get a proper measurement. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark our holes where we're gonna be drilling. So try to center it up as, as well as possible. So we're gonna be using the rear or towards the tailgate. And then on this one, we're gonna be using the third from the middle out. And we're gonna do that on the front and back and on both sides. So now we're gonna go ahead and drill a pilot hole in all of our spots that we marked. Now, uh, you're gonna to wanna to be careful, especially on the driver's side, the fuel tank's right below. So drill down slowly. You don't wanna let the bit go too far and obviously double check your clearances before doing this. Um, but we'll go ahead with a, just an eighth inch drill bit, just kinda of get our holes in place. And then just repeat the same process of drilling the pilot hole for the remaining holes. Now on the driver's side, we're at our wheel well. There is this bracket that holds our wiring up. We're gonna wanna remove that because our plate's gonna sit here and this can get in the way. So just kinda keep your hardware handy for later. But this is gonna be a 13 millimeter bolt holding that in. So we'll go ahead and get this removed. Now on the same frame rail, I just kinda went down. You're gonna find this oval hole and we're gonna pass our carriage bolt as well as our spacer block in place. Now, it is gonna be a little bit tricky here, but what you can do is get your carriage bolt kind of passed in play, or into place there, just holding on to it. And then we should be able to get the shorter end of this put in. Make it a little bit tricky here. Um, so whatever kind of works best for you. That worked pretty well is passing that down to the end, put the longer end first. And then we're gonna follow this up. We have this oval spacer. And this is gonna kind of center our bolt up. So get this in place. It should kind of sit flush in that hole. And then we have a retainer clip. So hold on to your bolt. And then this little square will just kind of thread on here. And that's just gonna make sure that our stud stays in place and doesn't fall back in the frame rail. So be careful. The edges are fairly sharp on these, but thread this down to where it's pretty well uh, Tighten this up at least a little bit and has that spacer in place on the frame. So just kind of keep that in place as you tighten your retainer down. Now we'll just go to the other wheel well and we're gonna just repeat that same process here on the passenger side. Now we're gonna take our driver's side bracket and get this kind of mounted in place. And we're really checking to make sure that our holes are gonna be centered up here. Um, so we'll see that this side hole here right before the bend, that's where that hard there, hardware that we just passed in the frame is gonna go. So we're gonna kind of just tuck this back, make it a little tight here, and then put those, uh, these sides should go up on the frame. You may need to move some wiring uh, on the other side to kind of get this in place. Um, but main thing is, is getting this bolt right exactly where we need it. So we'll go ahead and we'll drop our passenger one in as well. And that way we can see both sides of the holes that we drilled in the bed. Now push the brackets flush against the frame and you should see the holes that we drilled for the rear rail lining up the holes. Now if they're not, you're gonna to wanna to go back and make sure that you have those lined up properly. And now we're gonna head up into the bed and enlarge those to pass our carriage bolts down. Now that we know that we're lined up with our brackets, we're gonna go ahead and enlarge the holes. Now I keep a carriage bolt handy, that way I can test fit to make sure that it fits in there. Now a 916 drill bit's gonna get you there. What I tend to do is just kind of run the drill bit a little bit wide here and that way it's a little ovaled out and it's gonna allow for a little bit of adjustment once we get our rails in. Now we're, when we install the front rail, we are gonna make it to where um, the rail is gonna fit, fit in there well, but sometimes it can get pretty tight and you'll have to bind it. So having a little bit of adjustment, that way when you have everything in place, you can loosen it and uh, knock it back a little bit is handy and that's what I found, so it's up to you. Main thing, just go through, drill all these out, then we're gonna come back, file them down and get them painted. I'm gonna go through just with a file and get some of those burrs taken off.
And then since this is gonna be raw metal, you're gonna to want to coat that. So I'm gonna just use a little bit of clear uh, spray paint. If you have a bed liner, you can use black, whatever you have, just to kind of coat the inside raw edge. Now once you go through and do the same for all of those, we can get our rail in place and drop our carriage bolts in. Now you may need to use, uh, move some of your wire looms as you put your bracket in place. You may see that it's not wanting to, uh, it might pinch this in place. So just get your carriage bolts passed through here as well as the one on the side that we did. And again, move any wire loom that you may need to. Now getting the hardware up here is gonna be a little bit tricky. So I'll show you on the center one exactly how we're gonna do it for the others. Now the other ones are gonna get a little bit tricky as far as space goes, but it's going to be this offset square plate, a split washer, and then we have a nut. But since this is on the bottom of the corrugation, uh, to kind of space it, we need to put our U-shaped spacers. So we have this in place. So we can just slide this in, and then I'm gonna just hand tighten this up to where it's nice and snug. Uh, we don't need to get any crazier than that because we are gonna want this uh, not completely tight, just snug, because we're gonna put our rail in to find out where we're gonna mount our front rails in place. Now, when you get to the side bolts, make sure that the U-shaped spacer is going between the bed corrugation and the brackets, and that's just gonna kinda close that gap, and that way when we tighten everything down, it's not gonna bend the bed. So make sure you put that in place, and then you're gonna have your offsets uh, square plate, and then the rest of your hardware. So make sure you're doing that for those four bolts. Now that we have our hardware on the bottom tightened up, we're also gonna do the same on our side bolts that we installed. So we're gonna use the larger flat washer, the split washer, and then we're gonna follow it up with the nut. Again, just hand tightening it here. And then we can go ahead and do the same on the other side. Next, we're gonna install our U brackets. Now, based on if you have a short bed or a long bed, there is gonna be different configurations on our short bed here. Um, I'm gonna be using this rear hole. Now, push your bracket up and you should be able to pass this through. It's gonna kinda of sit at this 45 degree angle. And then on the other side, on the outside, we're gonna finish it up with a split washer and then nuts. So, we'll go ahead and get those in place and then repeat on the other side. Now at this point, I have the hardware already hand tightened on the rear. So what I'm gonna do is take your fifth wheel that you're gonna be using, and you're gonna wanna drop that into the rails, and then we'll get our front rail here. We're gonna drop this in place. Separate this to where we're pushing this uh, all the way forward. We're gonna put some pressure here. So um, we're gonna want this forward towards the cab and then the base kind of towards the back and that way we're spreading it out as much as we possibly can and getting that nice fit so just make sure it's sitting there flush pull this back as you push the base and you might want to kind of just you can take a dead blow and kind of hit this along but that way again it's going to be nice and tight so from here we're going to go ahead and measure side to side because there is a little bit of movement between these slats so once we're happy with that i'll go ahead and start marking our holes that we're going to drill in now the holes are gonna be different than the previous ones we drilled for the rear. Um, so it's gonna be the furthest out holes here. So we'll go ahead and center that up. And then we're gonna be doing the forward hole in the middle here. And then again, the outside holes on the other side. And once we have those marked out, we'll go ahead and I'm gonna get this rail out of the way as well as our fifth wheel and we can drill our pilot holes and then enlarge these out to fit our carriage bolts. Now, if you've noticed that there is a gap because of the corrugation of the bed here, we're gonna be using the U-shaped spacers to go on the top side instead of the bottom. So just make sure you put those in place before putting hardware on the bottom side. Now we're just gonna do our hardware underneath just as we did before. And that center one, since it sits in that middle corrugation, don't forget to use the U-shaped spacer before hand tightening this down. Now getting the hardware in place can be a little bit tricky. Um, you can kind of get it from the side on the outside. Um, if I was to do it again, take the wheel well liner off. That's gonna give you a lot more clearance to be able to do it. So now we're gonna come back with our torque wrench. Now the order that we're gonna do this, we're gonna do all the ones that are on the rail first, 
then we'll do the side rails, and then we'll do the U-bolts finally last, and we're gonna alternate on the U-bolts, so a little on top, a little at the bottom, and that way it snugs up evenly. Now the torque settings will change between some of the hardware, so double check your instruction manual for that. And uh, so all of this is gonna be a three quarter inch socket that we're using, so we'll go through and get this all torqued down properly. And once you get everything torqued down properly, we'll make sure to put our bracket here back in place. So it's got the little hole there and there's a hole in the bracket. So we can go ahead and use our factory hardware to get that tightened back down. We're also gonna wanna make sure that we get our spare tire put back up. And that was a look, an installation of the BMW InBed Rail Fifth Wheel Kit on a 2016 GMC Sierra 1500.